Lift up the word and repeat after me. I believe this is the word of God. I believe what God says because it is impossible for God to lie. Well, many physical problems, many financial problems, many, many marriages, and, and sometimes people who are losing faith in God, all of these things have different reasons why they happen. But I've discovered over the years one of the primary reasons that people have a problem in their marriage, they have a problem in their finances, they have a problem with friends, and uh, sometimes even physical problems, is simply because they give up. They don't quit. You don't stay with it. Fear comes in, and you quit. And that's really not a good thing. See, here's the deal. If you quit, you will not win. Now you think, if you quit, you will not win. And consistency is a real good thing. Now when you are being consistent, a lot of people will think you're being an idiot. Some people will look at you and say, come on, you need to walk away from this. Come on, this isn't working. I mean, you may weigh a bazillion pounds, and you put on a sweatsuit, if you can find one of those one-size-fits-all, which, by the way, I don't think that's true. <laughs> but if you, and, and you, you go down to the gym, and you're like hundreds of pounds heavier than anybody else in the gym, and people are looking at you, and they're kind of snickering and pointing and everything. Well, here's the deal. If you, if you want to get physically fit, you need to be consistent. And you, you need to not listen to the people who snicker. And put all of that behind you, get that out of your head, and determine in your mind and in your heart, you will not quit. And then even though there was great humiliation that first day, everybody's pointing their finger at you, and, and they're laughing, and they're snickering, you know, and... You know, they're saying, look at the Pillsbury Doughboy, you know, and that kind of stuff. There's a Michelin tire kid. Hey, whatever. You suck it up and you go back the next day. And the next day. And one of these days, you'll be just like Jim McDermott. Watch his video from 2002. Chubby little boy. <laughs> but he started running and he was consistent and he was consistent. Are you following me? In your finances. See, in getting healthy. So many people, they'll go on a health food diet for a while. And then, well, hey, look, it's my birthday. It's not going to hurt to wolf down a cake today. Or it's, it's, it's the family reunion. It's okay. No. And so what happens, you break the consistency. And once the consistency is broken, it's really difficult sometimes to get back to it. You know, back in, back in the day when there were a lot of rodeos, you know, we had the J-Bar H Rodeo down here in Camden, and it was one of the biggest ones around. But the thing among the cowboys was this. If you get thrown off the bull and it tramples you, you need to get back on the bull. You need to get back on the horse. You, you need to get back. You cannot quit. I had a friend in high school. His dad owned a pharmacy in Raytown, Missouri. And he started working at the pharmacy, and that was back in the day when we were working for a dollar an hour, you know, that type of thing. And all of us other guys, I was working at a drugstore down the street, and I was making a, a dollar five. The boss pulled me in one day, and, and I was a soda jerk, or at least I was half of that. But uh, <laughs> the boss pulled me in one day as a soda jerk at Crown Drug Store, and, and, and he, said, he said, son, and this guy was an older guy, he was probably 30, he said, he said, son, you've been doing a great job. 
And I've been talking with the general manager, and we've decided we're going to give you a nickel an hour raise. Whew, man, that was good. Well, gas was only 19 cents. So. But I had a friend that was working down the street at his father's store. And when I was taking all of my money and buying stuff, you know, I was buying things. He was taking all of his money and putting it into a savings account. And back in the day, at the Raytown Bank, they had a, a savings account where every three months you would get a check for the interest. That was back when banks gave you interest. And every three months you'd get a check. And so I remember one time him showing me the check. It was like a dollar and twelve cents or something. Well, what happened was, is he continued with that for many, many, many years, all the way through college and everything. And then one day, his interest check was more than his paycheck. And he was making money without, I mean, he, he could have quit work and still made as much as he was making working, but it was only because of the consistency and the determination, I am not going to change this. I don't care how much my friends make fun of me. I don't care how much I'm having to drive around in that old 54 Plymouth and everybody else has got newer Chevy Impalas. I, I don't care. I'm going to stick with it. And he did. And he became one of the richest guys out there. Now, I'm not saying put all your money in the bank and live off the interest. But what I am saying is this. In in life, it's a scriptural principle that consistency yields rewards. People who consistently do what God's telling them to do. Now, if you consistently do what the devil tells you to do, that also yields rewards. But you don't want that reward. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at some scriptures. Let's see what the Word of God has to say about this. Psalm 51.10, a scripture we're all familiar with. But see, here's the thing. There's nuggets hidden in the scripture that sometimes we don't think about. Look at this. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a what? A steadfast spirit within me. Steadfast means it's continuous, it's steady, it holds fast, it doesn't change. And that's what you need when you're dealing with things in life you take the Scripture of God and you don't waver. You hold on to it. You, you don't change. You don't change the Word of God to fit your circumstance. You change your circumstance to line up with the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. When the New King James Bible first came out, I went and got me a, a copy because I had read about how it was translated from the Textus Receptus uh, Greek New Testament manuscripts, and I felt that that was the best manuscript. And so I went and got one. And then a few months later, I got a, a new King James study Bible from the same company, Nelson Publishing. And I was reading in one Bible, and it said, if you continue in my word... And I was reading in another Bible, same verse, and it said, if you abide in my word. And so I thought to myself, wait a minute, this is the exact same, same translation of the Bible. Why do they, they, they made a mistake here. One place they say continue, one place they say abide. And so I looked up the Greek word, did a little word study on it, and the word for abide and continue is exactly the same Greek word, the same word. So anytime in the Bible you see the word abide, which kind of sounds like a, a biblical word, now abide, faith, hope, and love, that's kind of like, now have faith, hope, and love. No, it's continue. You continue in faith. You continue in hope. You continue in love. These three, of course, the greatest is love. But don't forget the part about continuing. Now, God is a consistent God. We know from Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he likes now, 
you need to understand this. What he likes now, he liked it 2,000 years ago. And what he likes now, he liked it 5,000 years ago. Think of it this way. Jesus and the Father are one. What God didn't like 5,000 years ago, he doesn't like now. And don't try to get the word to change with society. Don't say, well, yes, the Bible says that God doesn't like this. It's an abomination. However, the Supreme Court said, well, it doesn't matter what the Supreme Court says. If it conflicts with what the Supreme God said, then what the Supreme God said takes precedence. And we should never forget that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. His Word does not change. In fact, He is the Word. He's the olive in the top. He is the Word. All right. Now, Ephesians 5.1 tells us that we're to be imitators of God. We should imitate God. Well, what did I just say about God? He doesn't change. In other words, He's consistent. He's not wishy-washy, as my grandmother used to say. And probably still would, and maybe she still does in heaven. I don't know. In John 8, 31, take a look at this. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you abide, what's abide mean? Continue. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. All right, isn't that interesting? If you continue. Then he goes on to say, and then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But it all, knowing the truth and being set free all hinges on abiding in the Word, continuing in the Word. See, a lot of people don't continue in the Word. They, they may get into the Word and confess a Scripture in order to get them out of the circumstances that they're in. But once they get out of the circumstances that they're in, then they don't go back to that Word. And, and see, that's where, even with myself, uh, you know, I went through a, a miraculous healing. I went through a miraculous healing. And during that time, I listened to a lot of healing scriptures. But I noticed that as I got healed, I didn't listen to the healing scriptures as much as I did when I was needing the healing. See, no, we need to continue in these things. Because in order to maintain your healing... You need the same scriptures that brought you the healing. Are you following me? And a lot of the same way with financial situations. You're believing God to get you out of this fi financial dilemma that you're in. And you look at the scriptures where it says, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of His children. And you read all of these scriptures, and, and God miraculously gets you out of that jam that you're in. Well, that doesn't mean all of a sudden now you quit standing on those scriptures. Do you want to stay out of the jam that you got yourself into? Yeah, well, all right. You know, Jesus was talking to the Jews, to his friends, about what was going to happen during the tribulation. And during the Great Tribulation, and Jesus is the one that coined that phrase, the Great Tribulation, during the Great Tribulation, that's seven years after the rapture of the church, there's going to be a time when the, the enemy is going to try to get people who are left here on the earth to take the mark of the beast, going to try to get them to bow down and worship the image, the pagan image. He's going to try to get that as a way of life for people because According to the Scripture, if you take the mark of the beast and you worship the false image, the false god, uh, you're damned. You'll be cast into outer darkness at the second coming. That's what the Scripture says. So Jesus is talking to these young men, and he's, they ask him this question. They said, what's going to happen before you set up your kingdom? And he's, he's telling them about some of these things that's going to happen during tribulation. And he says, and you will be hated. This is Matthew 10, 22. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. So even 
consistency even in the end of days in in the time that we call prophetic times it's still going to be very important to endure to stay steadfast with God and as April shared a few moments ago there's going to be times when you have to make a decision am I going to do what the word says or what I think is going to help me out you know during the tribulation there's going to be people who are going to they're going to be told you cannot buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. Can't be done. And there's going to be heads of family that's going to see their family starving. And they're going to think the only way I can get food for them is to take the mark. No. You endure to the end. You don't give up. You never surrender. All right? Now, remember this. You will never win if you quit. Don't quit. All right, everyone, raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I will never win if I quit. I won't quit. You're not going to quit. You're not a quitter. <laughs> Second Timothy 2.12 Look at this, 2 Timothy 2.12. If we endure, we shall reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. But look at the first part of that. If we endure. Well, what is endurance? Endurance is just the continual not giving up. Enduring. Don't give up. Don't quit. Now, there's people all over the world right now that are debating in some area of their life to quit. I'm telling you right now, don't quit. Now, there may be times, now follow me on this, there may be times when the Lord will tell you to stop in a certain area. But you must be led by the Holy Spirit and you must know that it's God. But when it comes to His Word and His truth and His promises, those things you never quit. And if you hear a voice telling you to quit on one of God's promises, here's what you say. I rebuke you, Satan. Get behind me. I'm not listening to you. Shut up. You know, there's times when you just got to tell the devil to shut up. Shut your fat mouth. <laughs> All right. Now, take a look at Matthew 13, 20. See, we also need to understand this, that when the Bible talks about a double-minded person, that's what the word doubt means in the Bible. The word doubt means double-minded. Double-minded means you're thinking down two different paths. You're thinking God's Word is true. The other path is, but I'm not really sure if I can depend on it. And the Bible describes that as a wave of the sea being tossed back and forth. You believe and you kind of don't believe and you believe and you don't believe. That's called doubting. And doubt will not bring you the victory because doubt does not yield the consistency that's required in the Word of God. When you're doubting, you're not enduring. When you're doubting, you're not abiding. When you're doubting, you're not continuing. We are to continue in the Word. All right. 2 Timothy, well, let's take a look at this. Matthew 13, 20. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the Word and immediately receives it with joy. But he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. See, you can't, enduring for a while is not enduring. Enduring for a while means you gave up. He endures for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now that word for stumble there in the scripture, manthano, the Greek word, is also the same word that means offended. So when a person doesn't endure and they waver and, and they're believing sometimes, and well, I don't know if it's really true, but I'm sure it is. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
that causes you to become offended. And there are a people, there's a lot of good Christian people out there who are offended at God because they can't figure out why God did this to them or why God allowed this to happen or why God this, and they blame God for a lot of stuff when in reality it's the fact that they didn't endure, they didn't abide. You all still love me now? 1 Corinthians 13, 7. That was kind of puny. When, when I said, do you guys love me? And it was kind of like, yeah, well, whatever. You know. Okay. Well, at least you're honest. No. I love you guys. I'm enduring. I'm... I'm <laughs> You guys are supposed to endure also, you know. Okay. First, First Corinthians 13, 7. It's talking about love. And it says, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. How many of you know that for Jim and Alice to have lasted 49 years, they had to endure some things? One of them probably more than the other. We're not going to say who. but there's some things you've got to endure. You know? I've got like three pages of illustrations there, and I'm just not going to give any of them. <laughs> now, 2 Timothy 2.3, Therefore, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, somebody may say, well, <laughs> you got a magic marker. Let's just take that verse out. There's going to be times, right, Loretta? There's going to be times when things seem like hardship. There's going to be times when you're, you're continuing in the Word, but things aren't going so smooth in your life. And things happen. Things happen in life. But like a good soldier, you can't switch armies. And you must continue to do what the general has told you to do. Hmm. Ephesians 6.13. Here's one that we kind of gloss over a little bit. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Okay, how do you withstand in the evil day? And having done all, stand. How long? Forever. You never back down. Never give up. Never surrender. You saw the movie too, didn't you? Okay. Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So it's not just taking up the whole armor of God, which you've got to take the whole armor of God. Yes. But once you take the whole armor of God, you don't retreat. You stand. You believe it. You speak it. You don't doubt it. You don't question the Word of God. You've got to, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, if you abide in my word, you'll be my disciples. And then, if you abide in the word and you're my disciples, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You want to get set free? Wouldn't it nice to just be free? Hmm. All right. Psalm 119, 91. They continue this day according to your ordinances. For all are your servants. Well, that little nugget of truth just tells us this. If you're his servant, you're going to continue. If you're a true servant of the Lord, you're going to continue in what he says. Well, what does he say? What is it he says? You know, James 1.17 says, Every good and every perfect gift comes from him. God is a good God. 
God wants to bless you with what? With good things. With good things. He wants you to have health. He wants you to, you know what's really important? is family, relationships. God is a God of relationships. Once again, why would Jesus say this? They will know that you're my followers by the love that you have for one another. That's what he said. So do you love one another? Turn to the person on your right and say, I love you. Yeah. Turn to the person on your left and say, I'm thinking about it. No, come on. No. No. See, look. They don't have to be your best friend. This, now, now, I'm just telling you right now, and I'm not looking around to see who's sitting by who, okay? But they don't have to be your best friend. You don't have to have them over for dinner. But you've got to love them. Yep. Hmm. Okay. I've got a scripture to read you. Now, now, here's the deal. This is John chapter 15 where Jesus talks about, I am the true vine. But now when I read you this scripture, I want you to listen to how many times Jesus says to continue and to abide. Are you ready? John 15, 1. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that you may bear more fruit you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken to you abide in me and i in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides continues in the vine neither can you unless you abide or continue in me I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. See, a lot of people read this scripture, it says, well, the word of God says, and it's talking to believers here, it says, ask whatever you want, and it's yours. Well, yeah, but what about the if part? If you abide in me, the first part of it, if you abide in me, and it's not just abiding in him, because if you're a born-again believer, you are abiding in him, and he's abiding in you. But then he says, and my words abide in you. In other words, are you saying what he says? <laughs> are you saying what God says? Or are you quitting? Are you abiding? Or are you quitting? All right, I think it's time to do this again. All right? Put your hand on your heart this time instead of raising it up. You will never quit. Never quit. Say, you, oh, let's say it this way. Repeat after me. I will never win. If I, quit, if I quit, I won't quit. Come on, say, I won't quit. I mean, there's people that are just quitting all the time. I mean, they're, they're playing musical churches. They're playing mu musical friends, you know, not musical marriages. I was just listening for the clicks of people online. Okay. <laughs> Verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. That's a big deal. You need to think about that. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. You will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. Continue in it. 
you know, how many people really understand how much God loves us? For God so loved the world that He gave His Son. You know, when you watch a movie like The Passion of the Christ and you see somebody all, an actor, all beat up and bloody and you're, you're thinking, wow, that's, you know. Well, Jesus wasn't an actor. He, he really was that way. He was beat up and bloody. Thorns, huge thorns. They weren't sticker bushes. They were thorns pressed down into His skull. Spikes driven through His wrist hung naked on a piece of wood. He did that because he loved you. You need to understand, he did that because of love. And sometimes, well, I don't know, I should read a scripture or two, but ooh, I think Days of Our Lives is coming on TV right now. So I'm sure there's a good moral story in that. Verse 10, <clears throat> I just feel the love coming. Verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. That's how we abide in his love, by doing what he says. You know what, doing what he says feels good for a believer. You, you want to feel good? You do what he says. It makes you feel good. I tell you what, if you're a born again believer, and you're doing what he says don't do, you don't feel so good. Hmm. Huh. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Remain is another word. He wants his joy to just be in you all the time. He doesn't want you to just get a little whoopee at church. He wants you to get a little whoopee all the time. Whoopee! <laughs> hey, Chiefs get a touchdown. I say praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, why not? Praise the Lord in all things. I love you guys. Romans eleven twenty two. 22. Hmm. Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell, severity, but towards you, goodness. Goodness. So we have goodness. Whoa, wait a minute, there's more. If you continue. <sighs> Why did he have to add that? Okay. If you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, hmm. Colossians 4, 2. How many prayer groups do we have in the church and prayer people? Raise your hand. Come on. If you're in a prayer group, raise your hand. Colossians 4, 2. Continue earnestly in prayer. Now, that's, that's a scripture to the prayer group. Oh, wait a minute. No. That's to all of us. Okay, so <laughs> I, this is a rhetorical question. Don't raise your hand. But how many of you have not prayed in the last week? Okay, now just, just think about it. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. In other words, be thankful in your prayers. It's good to thank God for stuff. Wow. All right. We're drawing to a close. Not real close, but we're, we're yeah, it's pretty close. <laughs> Hebrews 3.14 For we have been, become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Now let's think about that. For we have become partakers of Christ if, if 
we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Hallelujah. Hmm. 1 John 2, 24. Therefore, let us abide, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. In other words, the first words that were spoken to you as a believer out of the Scripture. You know, I remember some of the first Scriptures that really started coming alive to me. And the Lord will do that. He will bring Scripture alive within you. Don't forget it. You have a word from the Lord, don't forget it. When He speaks to you, don't forget it. Wow. So, hmm. you know, I, uh, I'm not going to read all this Scripture, but 2 Timothy 4.3 says there's going to be a time when people will not endure sound doctrine. They're not going to stay with sound doctrine. You know, we're seeing that today. There's a lot of goofy cults out there. I mean, there's people that believe Jesus was an angel. You know, there's people, there's people that believe we're already in the millennium right now. There's people that believe Jesus has already returned. They're not enduring sound doctrine. And that time is here. But don't be led away by strange teachings. Always go back to the Word. Look, everything I teach you, I've been the pastor here 28 years, and let me tell you something. Everything that I teach you, I don't care what video, we, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube and Vimeo and Rumble and all different kinds of formats, hundreds. If you're watching one of them and something doesn't seem right, check it out with the Word. Don't believe something just because Pastor Larry said it. Are you following me? Over the years, I've changed some of the things I believe because I was maybe taught something as a, a child, and then maybe when I was 30 years old, I found a scripture that contradicted what I was taught. And then you've got to make a decision. Am I going to believe tradition or the Word? Wh which, which am I going to believe? Am I going to believe what God says, or am I going to believe what great-grandma taught me when I was five or something? Well, no, we always have to go back, regardless of what denomination we're in, we have to go back to the Scripture, and the Word of God is true. And how many times have we heard Jesus say today, through the Word, abide, continue in His Word? And there's, there's 153 churches here at the Lake of the Ozarks. That's interesting. There's 153 fish in the net when they... That's it. Okay. But here, here's the deal. Not every church teaches the same thing. So if you're watching, or if you're here, or if you're a visitor, or whatever, whatever church you go to, including this one, check things out with the Word of God. If you go to a class, we have all kinds of Bible classes here at the church. You go to a class and something doesn't line up with something you think's in the Word, ask a question. Because we want to be a word church. All right? But there's going to be a time, it says so in 2 Timothy 4.3, a time when people will not endure sound doctrine. They, they won't stay with it. That they will fall away from it. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And what's that mean? We don't lose heart? That means... We don't give up. We don't fear. Fear will, will tempt you to give up. Fear, God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. And that's the enemy. The enemy works in, in fear. God works in faith. The enemy works in fear. That's the two spiritual forces out there. And you cannot allow fear to cause you to turn back. You know, and, and I've told you this before, and it, you know, Lot's wife turned back and she turned into a pillar of salt, you know. Um, she looked back. Well, there's a lady down at Walmart and she didn't look back and she turned into a telephone pole. <laughs> I 
Where's, okay. Now listen. Our, our emotional stability, I just got a couple notes here. <laughs> okay, our emotional stability depends directly upon our spiritual stability. If you're having emotional stability problems, get your spiritual stability lined out. Okay? Your personality, your steadfastness, depends on your relationship with the Father. You cannot, now let me tell you this, you cannot have a stable there may be times of stability, but you cannot have a consistently stable life without being stable spiritually. You cannot have a physical life. Your, your, your marriage, your relationship with your kids, your relationship with your neighbors, all of your relationships, you may have times of stability, but you're not going to have that consistent stability until you become spiritually consistent. Believe the word all the time. You must work at developing wholesome relationships. You must work at developing wholesome relationships. Avoid unwholesome relationships. You must understand submission and authority. Everyone must submit some way. There is no one above submission. Are you following me? And here, here's something that will help you. You are not always right. You notice I'm, always, I'm looking over this direction. <laughs> okay, Michaela, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you are not always right. Okay, now listen to this too. These are simple things that will help you. Everything is not somebody else's fault. I said everything in life is not Somebody else's fault. You cannot look for someone to blame for everything that happens. See, you're looking for, you're spending so much time looking for somebody to blame that you're not going to the Word of God and getting the solution. And my daughter came up with a brilliant brilliant, brilliant saying last week, and I hope I can remember it correctly. She said, quit trying to figure out how we got here. The fact is we're here. You trying to figure out how you got yourself in that stupid situation doesn't really help. The fact is you're in that stupid situation. Get in the Word of God and get out of it. All right, stand up and repeat after me. I will never win if I quit. I won't quit. I will abide in the Word of God, and I will be set free. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, and we thank you that you haven't given up on us. Oh my, you have plenty of reasons for giving up on us, but we're so thankful that you haven't, and you declared in your word that you never will. We love you, Father, in the name of Jesus, amen.